I want you to know something. Everybody else, you know, I'm, I'm still so basically old school when it comes to serving God that uh, I'm more like um, the preacher that wants to make sure you get it right before you move on. Amen. Because if you move on without getting it right, you're not built on a good foundation. And, you know, I, uh, I've just been examining a lot of houses. My, my daughter, uh, <laughs> who's probably one of the most successful people I know, besides the guy at, at uh, Word Network, uh, she has had me examining houses, you know, reports on houses. I found out that a lot of them, even though they look good on the outside, when you start examining the foundation, it's full of termites. Or they use the wrong wood. Or there's a leak somewhere in this old building. And if you don't have a good foundation to build on, I'm going to tell you right now, you don't ha you're not going anywhere. You may look good on the outside. Jesus called those people that were like that, he called them whited sepulchers. Uh, that means it's a grave, but they fixed up the outside of it to make it look ornate I'm going to tell you something I, you know, I, I can't see any point in putting all this money in, in tombstones because no matter what you do to the stone it ain't going to change the life you have lived and it ain't going to get you a better place in heaven but many that's what Jesus was saying they put on a nice show on the outside but there's nothing, nothing no substance inside it I meet Christians like that every day they're all showing no dough I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> They're good looking on the outside, but they ain't got nothing on the inside. A lot of people have fallen into that category that they put on a, a good front. And they can hanamo shy and shikamo pie and everything else when they're around Holy Ghost people. But there's nothing inside. We're going to talk about something here today that's going to make a real difference in your life, I believe. Because I'm going to get old school on you here, and I'm going to go back and tell you that not only are you going to get to heaven by doing what Jesus said, but every blessing that you need in your life is going to come forth from this. Because you cannot, believe me, hold something in your heart against someone else and be blessed of God. That might hurt, but it's the truth anyhow. If you've got anger and issues and, pr and problems like that, you need to get them right before you go on with somebody else and try to get closer to God. Jesus said this, and I'm going to read part of this scripture to you if I got it marked down. Yeah, here, here it is, Matthew 7. This is a sermon on the mountain, and very few people read this anymore. Here's Jesus telling you exactly what you have to do and what you need to do to be happy and healthy and joyful and have a good life. And the only message that I, I get most preachers preaching out of this is down in the seventh verse of Matthew 7 in this Sermon on the Mount. Ask and it shall be given to you. They ignore everything getting up to that point. I believe, ask and it shall be given to you. Good measure, heaped up, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Huh? Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. And knock and it shall be opened unto you. I believe that. But the next verse, for everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. But I'm going to tell you, you got six verses before you get there. Because you know as well as I do that there's a whole lot of seeking and ain't no answering and a whole lot of knocking and nobody opens the door. There's a lot of people asking and they don't receive. So what up with that? Did Jesus lie? Well, the answer is no. He did not did mislead us in any way. Instead, you have to listen to what Jesus said. You cannot go to ask what you will and it shall be given to you. You cannot go straight there. 
Instead, you have to read the rest of what Jesus said. Listen to this. Uh, this is going to hurt and sting a little bit, but a sermon ain't no good unless it stings just a little bit. If it don't hurt you, then all you got is a rub down. <laughs> Come on, say amen. A lot of folks go to church and get a rub down. <laughs> Does that feel good? Want me to rub over here, baby? <laughs> Am I right? You go to church and all they do is pour out all the things that they know you want to hear. That's not what a pastor does. Listen to this. Jesus said, judge not or you will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the same measure that you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take that speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. Surely that's not us. You hypocrite. First take out the log out of your own eye, and then you will be able to see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. I have found that this world today that we live in, and uh, I, I know that what the devil has been doing and how much he enjoys this, but I want you to listen carefully. We're in a time when people prejudge everybody. We prejudge people. We pre before we know them, we can look at them and judge them down to the ground without even knowing what that person may be going through. We can, <laughs> this is pretty good because, you know, I, I was wearing my casual clothes and, and my sandals and, and I was walking down here uh, and I crossed the street. I said, oh, I think I'll go over and get me a, a soda pop. And I walked across the street and somebody at the gas station walked up to me here and said, here, buddy, here's five bucks. <laughs> I said, boy, I better go home and change clothes in a, in a heartbeat. I said, or rather, I should stand out here all the time, you know. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I, I read a story the other night. Or actually, my daughter reminded me of this. Uh, I, I told this a long time ago about a man who had a flat tire at 3 a.m. in the morning on a deserted road. And this flat tire that he had, he, he looked around and he said, how, I, 3 a.m. in the morning, I guess I'm stuck here all night. But he saw a light from a little cabin up here. And he said, well, I'll go there. 3 o'clock in the morning. And on his way walking up toward that light, he kept thinking in his mind, you know, that man's going to really be mad at me when he opens the door, waking him up this hour. And what's he doing living out here in a country like this? Oh, he must be antisocial. He's probably a mean man, a hum hermit. He's probably somebody that's bad, hates people, does, I mean, would kill you in a minute. He's probably a serial killer living out here. He's saying this all the time. He's walking out that way. And when the guy opens the door after a few minutes, you know, and you can hear him rustling around in there, and he's, oh, boy, this is going to be bad. It's going to be bad. And when the guy comes to the door, he punches him in the nose and runs off. <laughs> He built this up so much in his heart. He knew what the guy was going to be like. And so he decided to punch him before he got his first hit in. The truth is, child of God, you cannot prejudge anybody. You have to have all the facts. And you have to have all the information. That's why we go to court and have Perry Mason. Amen. Amen. You've got to present the whole story. You can't judge by what you think in your heart. Uh, I, I've seen people that look like they're dirty, awful criminals. And they come up and say, hey, buddy, how are you doing? <laughs> and they turn out not to be what I first judged them to be. Many times you will meet people like this in your life. And if you allow yourself, you will prejudge somebody before you have all the information. 
I'm telling you how to get into heaven. I'm telling you how to get your healing. I'm telling you how to be blessed and prosperous. You cannot prejudge someone because you have a thought in your mind that look at him, look at her, this is how she is. You can't do that. If you start doing that, when you judge somebody without all the facts and all the information, you want to know what that word is called in modern English? Prejudice. Well, I can look at that guy and say, know exactly what he is. You know, they did that to me for a long time. You know, I went, when I first went to school, my mama didn't have any, any money to buy me any shoes. And so she sent me to school barefooted. We didn't know, uh, we come up out of Kentucky, and we didn't know that, you know, you had slacks and shirts. What I would did is I didn't even wear a shirt to school, to kindergarten. I went barefooted wearing a pair of uh, uh, coveralls. And when I got there, they all laughed at me. That stuck with me for years. They called me stupid. They called me dumb. They called me country bumpkin. They called me uh, names that I don't want to mention in here. But from that time on, they prejudged me what I was going to be like. And I'm going to tell you right now, anybody prejudging you, it's of the devil. Anybody that forms an opinion about you without knowing anything about you is of the devil. Even Marcus Aurelius, the, the emperor of Rome in, in the year 400, in his book he wrote this, if you want to understand a complicated issue, you have to take it apart one by one and examine each part in and of itself. Somebody wants to know something about you. They can't just look at you from a distance and know about you. They can't know anything about you from a distance. Because that is walking blind through this life. I'm telling you right now, many people do this. Why did you, what did Jesus say about judging others? He didn't tell you you can't judge anybody. You know, I'm going to tell you right now, we're living in a very permissive society because anybody can shut you down in a moment by saying, you can't judge me. Well, actually, we can. We can judge you not by our emotions, but we can judge by the facts. When you look at somebody and you see them doing evil, then you can say, I judge that to be evil. But when you look at somebody and they haven't done anything, you cannot judge them without knowing them. Can anybody say amen? amen. When you come into the house of prayer here, don't look at somebody and, and think you know who they are and where they come from and what's in their background because you don't. Not only that, you don't even know what they've been going through. Some people, when they come to church, have been going through hell, and they may sit there and weep and cry, and you think, oh, that's a real sinner there. And that's not the case at all. You cannot judge by the sight of your eyes alone. Instead, what we have to do is we, you know, this permissive society we live in, uh, we, we've got a, 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 a society of what we call tolerance. We'll let anybody do anything in the name of tolerance and love. Well, I love my children. That's why I don't correct them. A man who does not correct his children does not love his children. Proverbs, you know, you need to look this one up. Hallelujah. You don't correct your children, it means you don't love them. Amen. Of course, you can't judge me and tell me how to raise my kids. I ain't telling you how to raise them. I'm just saying you don't love them if you don't correct them. Well, you're going to let them go through life like that? Hating everybody? Screaming and getting their way? No, you can't do that. Come on, say amen. Don't let them get out in this world and let the world change them either. you got to work with them every day. They say true love is accepting people for how they are. Listen, that's not true love. Amen. I don't run around with a, uh, with a foghorn, you know, trying to correct everybody. and say, Well, that's not right. You're going to hell because you're doing that. 
But instead, child of God, I prejudge in a certain way. If I see somebody committing sin, I can truthfully say they are of the devil. Oh, you can't judge me. Well, there it is. There's a judgment. It's a righteous judgment. If you live your life in sin and somebody won't, don't want to go to church with you, come to my church. I ain't going to your church. I see what you did all week long. <laughs> <laughs> I find myself another church. <laughs> Amen. It's hard, it's hard to get your neighbors to come to church. <laughs> I, know, I know I've walked all over this neighborhood trying to get folks to come to church and they won't do it. I live too close to them. Amen. <laughs> I think Alex may live the closest to me. Amen. Uh, everybody in the church. Praise God. But some people say, well, you can't judge my lifestyle. If you do, you're intolerant. You're a bigot. You're a racist. You're a hater. You're somebody awful if you just judge my lifestyle. Listen, I ain't kissing no man. I don't care what you say. Amen. You hairy men want to kiss each other? Get out of my face. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ain't got nothing to do with it, nothing to say about it. Come on, you need to say amen on that. I, I, don't, don't, I don't go there. <laughs> we say, sing a song in Jamaica, me nan go down day. <laughs> they say there's a fire that burn all day. Me nan go down day. <laughs> I ain't going down there, hallelujah. I don't get in the pig pen with a prodigal son in order to save him. I tell him about the Father's house. I don't commit sin in order to save a sinner. Because you're lying to yourself. Well, I'm only doing that because that's what they do, and, that, and I'm, trying to not be, I'm trying to be tolerant. Stop being so tolerant. Won't you tell somebody the truth every once in a while? Come on, church, say Amen. You say, well, I'll get in trouble. A lot of people will hate me if I tell the truth. Well, they crucified Jesus for it. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm here. I, you know, the, these faith messages have all messed everybody's mind up. A desire to escape all pain and escape all suffering is not a godly desire. If we had let some of these people... Uh, uh, participate in creation they had given us a, a rainbow without a flood come on say amen on that they'd have never had a rainstorm it, 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 they just want to have rainbows everywhere you can't have a rainbow without a rainstorm amen they'd given us roses without a thorn you know, I'm going to tell you, the, the thorn's on there for a reason. You may not have thought about it. They just didn't want you coming up there and grabbing that beautiful thing off of there without taking some care. Life is very much in the same way. You, you, to, if you seek to avoid all suffering, you'll find you're in all conflict and all problems. You don't want to argue with anybody. Well, I just walked away. Why don't you stand there and tell you, tell you mine? Then they told theirs. Why don't you do that? Amen. They said, well, they get mad at me. What? <laughs> they don't respect you at all if they're saying that kind of stuff at your face. What are they saying behind your back? I better quit here. Uh, help me. Give me some. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, what I'm trying to tell you here is it, 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 they said judge not, and that means you can let anybody do whatever they want to and not tell them. I'm going to tell you something right now. You don't, may not have that responsibility, but I do. I'm the pastor of a church. And uh, uh, Santana and David will tell you right now, and, and Brother Lamarck, they'll tell you that I'd have a lot more musical instruments up here if I went along with their lifestyles. Huh? 
Huh? Well, I'm building a church, and I, you know, I had uh, all these. Uh, <laughs> one guy, what was his, what was his favorite, uh, favorite show on TV? Uh, there's something about uh, uh, an eye for a straight guy or something like that. Yeah, well, forget about it. I ain't saying it. That was his favorite show. He said, oh, did you see that episode last? I said, get off my stage. <laughs> he said, Brother Ross, pray for me because my wife is divorcing me. I said, I don't blame her. I only know you and I want to divorce you. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the thing is, child of God, you say, Brother Ross, you, you, you're not tolerant. I, no, I'm not. I have no tolerance for evil. I have no tolerance for sin. I have no tolerance for thieves. I don't have any tolerance for liars. Amen. Amen. Neither should you. My mama told me anybody to steal from you will lie to you, and anybody to lie to you will steal from you. She put them on the same level. What we need to do here is, like I started out, we need to get back old school again. We need to get back to the old landmark. Jesus taught against a specific kind of judging. He didn't teach against judging because you have to judge some things, whether they be right or wrong. God will give you a spirit of discernment. Do you know what discerning of spirits is? It's to tell you which spirit is of God and which spirit is not of God. And you say, I'm not doing that. That doesn't mean you have an intolerant spirit. What it means is you have spiritual discernment. You can walk into a place and know it's not right. Who told you that? You know that because God has been giving you the spirit of discerning so you know good from evil and bad from good. God operates in your heart that way. God moves on the inside of us. And why is it, child of God, that we look and we judge other? We, we, we see some little fault, some little flaw. You know, you... You can pick out flaws on everybody. You know, look at me right now. I'm looking good. Amen. Oh, yeah. I didn't do that for applause. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. But the church I got saved in, I couldn't even get into the church dressed like I am. I got too much gold on. Somebody said, oh, Brother Ross, look at my watch. And, you know, I, I never say anything about my, my jewelry. You know, I, I don't want anybody to know. You know, I, I have a friend in France that got this for me. I saw him whip out $18,000 and lay it down on the counter when they gave me this. I said, you know something? If I was only richer, I would dress better. But the truth is, why buy it when somebody would give it to you? This is my cousin. He's all right. He owed me a lot more than that, but he did good. <laughs> the truth is, I do, you don't vaunt yourself. You don't push yourself out here. And you're not being a holy Joe. You know, you know what my nickname was in high school? Preacher. Hey, preacher. I mean, when I was out playing baseball, hey, throw the ball to preacher. And everybody said, they're looking in the grandstand for a reverend out there somewhere. It was me. I wasn't ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed today. You say, Brother Ross, you'll get in a lot of trouble. Oh, I've had, uh, I've been beaten up many times. I got stark scars on me. I've been stabbed, I've been shot, I've been beat up. i got pictures on my, my, my camera. I ought to show you how they beat me up in Philadelphia. My face all swollen up here. Why? Because I went into a neighborhood where, you know, people like me should not go, Christians I'm talking about, and uh, uh, that's where my building was, in the middle of a, another religion's neighborhood. And they beat me up because of it. 
But then they got afraid of me because I didn't leave. I'm telling you something, child of God. I, I'm, not a, I'm accustomed to suffering, and I've, I've, I've been arrested. You know, preachers ain't no good unless they get in jail every once in a while. I, 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 you ain't no good either unless they arrest you for something. <laughs> you you got to know what the other side of life is. <laughs> Amen. I've been arrested in five different countries. I've been captured by gorillas, not, you know, not furry guys crawling around in the mountains, Cubans, in Africa, in Angola. I was captured there. They turned me loose. You know, uh, everybody would, I, 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 I had a friend, his name was uh, uh, Christopher Cross. He wrote a song, Caught Between the Moon and New York City. Everybody hear that song? It's on uh, a movie. And he was really popular until he went to, uh, uh, to Africa. And, everybody, and I saw him in the hotel, and he said, oh, come with me. I, I, I've got to go up here and perform one night in Botswana. I said, how are you going? He said, I'm going to take an airplane. They got a plane for me. So we flew from uh, J Johannesburg uh, up there. And uh, when we got there, you know, I was standing around, you know, watching uh, all the people, you know, uh, gambling and, uh, you know, doing what they did. And uh, so I'm waiting there for the end of it. And uh, uh, he told me, he said, I, I'm going to have to spend the night. Are you ready? To, and I said, no, I was, I was going to go back. He said, well, the plane ain't going. I said, well, what am I going to do? Well, here, uh, I talked to some people. And these missionaries said, well, we're driving back. And I said, really? I'll go with you. And so I got in the, in the Jeep, and we're, we're driving down through there like crazy uh, you know, on this road down through Africa, going through, I don't know, mountains, jungles, everything else around us. And I saw a guy walk out into the road way down here, and he did this. Now watch. He did this. And I said, oh, he wants some water. I said, we got a case of water back here. Let's give him some water. And so he slowed down, and they handed me a water. I was going to hand it to him out of there. And here came about 40 guys out of the jungle with machine guns and camouflage. And I, I didn't see them. They were camouflaged real good. <laughs> and they came, they surrounded us. They made us get out. And uh, they, I, I, you know, I knew some Swahili and I knew some Igbo and some Yorubai, but I did not know what they were talking. I knew a little Maasai, but I did not know what language they were talking. But I heard some guy over there. And uh, it just his back turned to me, and it was Spanish. And I said, well, that's a, there's a guy who can speak Spanish. So I knew that he was from Cuba. Now, here's what they had us do. Any, anybody ever been persecuted for Jesus? I mean, seriously now. They stripped us all down to our shorts. Women, too. They made them take off everything. I, I was hiding my face. They were all standing there stark naked in the middle of the road. That is one way to debase somebody. I'm standing there too, but I, I'm with my, just my underwear on. And I walked down there, and they, they didn't know, pay any attention to us. I was going through all of our stuff. And I, walk, I didn't have anything because I didn't take anything with me. And I walked down there, and uh, the, 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 the Spanish guy that was in charge of the whole thing was sitting there. And I said... You know, I'm from Miami, Florida. I said, you got any family there? And the guy looked up at me. He said, you're from Miami? I said, yeah. He said, my aunt lives there. She, and I said, you're, you're Cuban, obviously. And he said, yeah. I said, well, you want me to deliver a message to her? He said, yeah. I said, why don't you write a letter, and I'll take it with me when I go. So he sat there and wrote a letter. And they, he told him, he said, leave this guy alone here. Give him back their clothes. Take the money if you want to, but give back everything else. And so we, we got back in the car, and I took the letter, and when I got to Miami, I went to her personally and delivered it to her. Well, you know, amen. Did that get me out of trouble? Amen. It got me out of trouble. And uh, the thing is, God will always provide a way of escape. Don't be afraid to get in trouble. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand up for what's right, and if the devil wants to fight you, let him come on and fight you. Because the Lord will fight your battles, and you will win every time when you're serving God. Every hand that raises against you in judgment, God said he would smite it down. Every time the enemy wants to do something against you, and you know the enemies, I'm I'm telling you right now, uh, you you can't just get involved in being tolerant to everything. Ladies, if your husband is committing adultery, don't let him come back. Men, if your wife is running around on you, stay away from her. She'll do it again. Boy, I didn't get many amens on that one there, you know. (laughs) Oh, change subject, change subject. (laughs) Erase that. Forget I said that. Amen. I ain't getting in your, your life, but I'm telling you, leopards do not change your spots. I got a claw mark from a leopard right up here on my back. Leopards do not change. I sat there. Listen, I, on, on this same trip, I was on safari, and I, I, uh, we were driving through there, and he, the driver was driving real slow. And I said, I heard, I, did you hear that? And he said, what was it? I said, a, a leopard growled. He said, they don't growl very often. I said, I heard one. So we stopped, we pulled over, and we're waiting. This is the same trip, by the way. We're, we're sitting there, and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. We waited like three hours. The guy said, come on, let's go. We're going to miss dinner, you know, back at the, the safari house or whatever it was. I said, let's wait just a minute. And so I, I got out of the thing. He said, you can't do that. He said, I'm responsible for you. You can't walk out here, uh, you know, in, in the uh, junk. You don't know what kind of animals are out there. I said, I know as much as you do, apparently. And so I went walking out through there, and I got up close enough to one. I'll tell you what I did. He was laying there on a limb asleep. See, when you're a Kentucky boy, you can stalk animals. And I walked up there right behind him, and I said, I can't resist it. And I reached out and touched him. And he jumped up and swap, one swap. But he missed me. He was off and gone. The thing is, child of God, if you get in circumstances, God will always provide a way that you can get out. God is able to do that. God is able to do that. God is able to do that. God will make a way. God will show you the way. At the right time, you cannot get an answer to some problems until you get at the very precipice of the problem. To get to the right very spot that it's yes or no, now or never, true or false, right now. You cannot, you cannot answer and solve some of the problems in your life until if you don't change, then it's going to be too late. Many people don't recognize that point when it comes in their life. They don't recognize when things go wrong, and they always do, they always will. But I'm telling you, you have to be able to recognize the leading of God's Spirit in your life. And when you do that, your life does change. Everything gets better. Join hands with somebody just for a moment here. Let's believe God. I believe God's going to do something great in your life. I believe it today. You've had enough troubles and trials. Hallelujah. I know you've had enough situations. Andre Crouch was a personal friend of mine. We traveled together many years. I've had many tears and sorrows And I've had questions 